Forget frequently asked questions. Common sense, common knowledge, or Google. How about advice from a real genius? 95% of people in any profession are good enough to be qualified and licensed. 5% go above and beyond. They become very good at what they do, but only 0.1% are real geniuses. Richard Jacobs has made it his life's mission to find them for you. He hunts down and interviews geniuses in every field. Sleep science, cancer, stem cells, ketogenic diets, and more. Here come the geniuses. This is the Finding Genius Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Before we begin, a note from our sponsor. I'm Richard Jacobs, Executive Director of the nonprofit Finding Genius Foundation and host of the Finding Genius Podcast. In late 2016, I was rear-ended at 65 miles an hour by a truck on the highway, which sent me off-road into a ditch. The impact of the collision gave me a concussion and other injuries. At the hospital, a CT scan showed that I had thyroid nodules, which turned out to be cancer. It was then, when I had a biopsy in my neck, that I realized, even if I was a millionaire, I wouldn't want a second or a third biopsy due to the pain and the invasiveness of it. And appointments at that time for thyroid experts were three to six months out. And I was worried about dying now, even if that was irrational. So because of this, I've decided to raise money to conduct a literature review on steroids, on the causes of anxiety and depression, a condition that affects well over 50 million people in the United States and hundreds of millions worldwide. Our goal is to create a codex, a guide that reveals all possible treatments for anxiety and depression for people that live with the condition or for loved ones that have it, as my wife and my son do. To find out more about our fundraiser, visit FindingGeniusFoundation.org and click on Current Initiatives. And now, to our guest. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Finding Genius Podcast, now part of the Finding Genius Foundation. Uh, Today, I have Nathan Crane. Uh, He's an award-winning author, inspirational speaker, a plant-based athlete, an event producer, and a 20 times award-winning documentary filmmaker. He's the founder of of the Panacea Community. Uh, creator of the Global Cancer Symposium, host of the Conquering Cancer Summit, and director and producer of the documentary film Cancer, The Integrative Perspective. So, Nathan, thanks for coming. Hey, thanks for having me. Really happy to be here. Yeah, it seems like you're uh, super busy and uh, really showing up in a lot of different places in a lot of different ways. What's your background, and did you have a, uh, you know unfortunate personal encounter with cancer, or what happened? Yeah, I mean, if we, you know, we have to go back quite a bit, but I'll give the short version. I grew up a pretty challenging childhood. I knew what it was like to be sick, to have a lot of mental, emotional trauma, to, you know, live in, in fear and sickness and stress. You know, 15 years old, I was heavily addicted to drugs and alcohol and ended up homeless on the streets. And I was really trying to figure out life, I think, like like anyone at that age. But I was really surrounding myself with people who were on a similar path, which was, you know, jail, prison, or death. And that's really where I was headed. Uh, You know, by 18 years old, I was pretty much headed for prison or death. Those were kind of my two options. And neither of those options seemed really good to me. And unfortunately, at the time, I just didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't know what living a healthy, vital, happy, meaningful life could be like, you know, I, um, uh, without getting into too many of the, of the details, I just ended up on this, this very challenging path a lot of people are on. I mean, there's a lot of kids today dealing with homelessness, with drug addiction, with alcoholism. There's a lot of adults today dealing with with all of that, millions, actually. And so certainly I was on the path towards uh, being diagnosed with something like cancer if if I even made it you know, to that age where I could have been diagnosed with cancer, which would have been very early. Like a lot of people now, people don't realize cancer is actually the number one killer in kids under 17. And in the 1970s, cancer was unheard of in children, right? And so the reality is, you know, if we don't change our lifestyles, these cancer diagnoses are just continue to go up exponentially year after year. And it's primarily diet, lifestyle, and environment. I didn't know that at the time, of course, and I was just barely surviving And I was really sick. I was on a fast food diet. I, you know, grew up with all the typical, you know, vaccinations. I was on um, antibiotics all the time because I was sick all the time. And at 18 years old, I had this big epiphany. My best friend and I drove to California, basically ran out of gas in Oceanside. And that's where, you know, I started my life over. And I got really big into meditating. And, you know, meditating really opened 
my mind to a new way of living. And I started studying with Buddhist monks, with Zen masters, uh, chanting with Hare Krishnas, uh, you know, really spending a lot of time diving deep into a spiritual path. I met this spiritual mentor by the name of Arturo Gaitan, who really taught me how to think for myself, which was a huge eye opener for me, you know, because we're all kind of conditioned as children to sit in our neat, nice little rows, listen to the authority at the front of the classroom, you know, don't speak out of turn, don't question the authority. Um, And if you do, you get in trouble. You don't have the answers. They have the answers or your book has the answers. We're just not taught to think for ourselves. And uh, one of the things, and that's why I got in so much trouble in school and was kicked out all the time and, you know, ended up down this path of addiction and alcoholism at a young age and kicked out of school in and out of jail, you know, homelessness, house arrest, because I just didn't fit into that typical societal norm. I did not resonate with being told what to do. Don't question, just do as you're told. And I was, a, I was a big questioner, you know, I questioned everything. I questioned the church at a, as early as five years old. And they, you know, wasn't really welcome back into the church, those kinds of things. I've always had questions. And, and I think that's something we've lost in our society is this deeper inquisitiveness to question everything that's going on, whether it's a global pandemic, it's your health, it's a diet someone's promoting, um, or it's, you know, doing as you're told because the authority tells you to do so. You know, I question all these things and I'm glad I have because it's led me down this path of discovering, wow, there's a whole other world that so many people just don't know about uh, that we all should know about, that we all have the ability and opportunity if we're willing to open our minds a bit and start asking questions about maybe there's a better way. Maybe there's a better way for our health, for our lives, for our mind, for our society, for our planet. What is that better way? Now, certainly, I'll tell you this, mainstream media is not giving you that better way. You know, they they basically make they make all their money off their advertisers by keeping you in fear. Right. And so many people realize that today. And yet they're still addicted to mainstream media. I stopped watching yep. mainstream media years ago, you know. So anyway, I had this big pit. meditation really helped me. And then I started diving deep into cleansing and detoxing and raw food and and uh, started getting into you know a lot of experimentation with health and healing uh, led me down, you know, about seven years on that journey. I was, had written a couple of books, was invited to speak, you know, I'm, mind you, I'm in my early twenties, you know, quite young and, and, uh, you know, invited to speak all over the country and writing books and, and just learning and loving what I'm doing and really, you know, going through a major healing journey and awakening journey of my own. And then my grandpa was diagnosed with cancer and it just opened my eyes that I was like most people. I didn't know anything about cancer. I was afraid of it. I felt helpless. I felt hopeless. I didn't know how to help him. And I wanted to help him. I was sitting there by him at his house in Arizona. He was going through chemotherapy radiation and he was really sick. His hair was falling out. He told me he could barely go to the bathroom without being in so much pain. And, you know, I quickly, quickly learned that that's common with people going through conventional medicine with cancer. It's not the cancer doing that to most people. It's the conventional medicine. And so that led me after he, you know, he passed away and quickly at that point is around 2013, I just became really obsessed and interested to learn everything I could about cancer, about how to prevent it, how to reverse it, how to heal it. And I just started interviewing every expert on the planet, producing conferences, publishing magazines, starting a documentary that's now since won 20 awards, which I'm just very, very happy about. And, uh, you know, produce, you know, summits have done hundreds of interviews and realized once you learn what actually causes cancer and what you can do to prevent it and reverse it, then you don't have to be afraid of it anymore. You know, we just don't understand what it is. And unfortunately, neither do our medical professionals. Most of our oncologists simply are not trained in the causes or the solutions for prevention or healing. They're trained in uh, surgery, pharmacology, you know, chemotherapy, radiation, and that's about it. They're, they get about four hours of nutritional education in school, believe it or not. Uh, I've interviewed many medical doctors on this topic, and they're just not trained in in lifestyle-related solutions. And it's unfortunate because, you know, I think millions of lives could be spared if our uh, medical schools started teaching diet, lifestyle, and an environment, which is what we know causes cancer and can help reverse cancer. So that's just been my mission now the last eight years. Did you get a lot of pushback on your views on cancer? 
because there is this big medical establishment. And, you know, if you're saying differently from what they're saying, uh, they may not like that. Before we continue, I've been personally funding the Finding Genius podcast for four and a half years now, which has led to 2,700 plus interviews of clinicians, researchers, scientists, CEOs, and other amazing people who are working to advance science and improve our lives and our world. Even though this podcast gets 100,000 plus downloads a month, we need your help to reach hundreds of thousands more worldwide. Please visit FindingGeniusPodcast.com and click on Support Us. We have three levels of membership from 10 to $49 a month, including perks such as the ability to see ahead in our interview calendar and ask questions of upcoming guests, transcripts of podcasts you're interested in, the ability to request specific topics or guests, and more. Visit FindingGeniusPodcast.com and click Support Us today. Now, back to the show. You know, fortunately, thankfully, I I have not. And a big part of why, I think, is because even though I am about speaking truth and I'm about bringing empowerment to people, I'm also about collaboration. I'm about unity. You know, that's why my film is called Cancer, the Integrative Perspective. It's about integrating the best from all fields of medicine. And I'm not saying that conventional medicine doesn't work. I'm saying that if you learn what you can do to improve your outcomes, which is almost always diet and lifestyle and environment and mindset, then your conventional medicine can even work better. And or there is conventional medicine that we probably shouldn't be using specifically on certain types of cancer and should be completely holistic. But there is good in all of it. There's good in indigenous medicine and in energy medicine, in naturopathic medicine, in conventional medicine. And my objective is to find the good in all these forms of medicine and bring them together and bring it to the world so that we use what works and stop using what doesn't work. And, uh, you know, I work with a lot of medical doctors who are primarily integrative doctors. They have been physicians for decades. And they started, Dr. Thomas Lodi, for example, Dr. Learen Keneally, Dr. Francisco Contreras, all started as medical doctors, realized that they were not getting the solutions for their chronic health patients that they wanted to. They realized surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, drugs, pharmaceuticals were not actually helping their patients heal. They were masking symptoms and maybe supporting, you know, here and there, reducing pain, maybe fighting infections, but not getting to the root cause. And they started focusing on root cause medicine. They started focusing on, okay, what else can I do? And that led them down natural medicine, holistic medicine, eventually integrative medicine. And now every single one of them and every integrative medical doctor that I work with has all told me they all get way better results for every single one of their patients than when they were practicing conventional medicine alone. So they still practice some conventional medicine, but they primarily help their patients with leading edge, safe, non-toxic technologies, with lifestyle changes, with nutritional changes, uh, with mindset changes, mental, emotional healing, which is critical. We might want to get into some of that. So, and, so let, let, yeah, let's get into that. If, if someone listening has cancer or knows someone that does, what would be a, a you know, I know every situation is different, but what would be a different type of advice or prescription or, you know, things to try or look at? So the first thing we have to do is understand what cancer is. This is the biggest thing most people simply don't know. And when you know it, you're so much more empowered to make better decisions for your health. So what is cancer? Cancer is a breakdown through damage, DNA damage of your cells, becoming they enter into a state of uh, basically fermentation. And that fermentative process is a destruction of the cells, but the cells are trying to, they still stick around because they're trying to survive. They're hanging on for dear life, right? I mean, I was a teenager. I was a survivor. I was just trying to survive. That's what your cancer cells are doing. People think, oh, it's this crazy invader that's invading you and taking over. It's really not. Cancer cells are the weaker cells in your body. Yeah, they can, if they're given the right environment, they can proliferate like crazy and replicate quickly and massively, but that's if they're given the right environment. And so you have to understand cancer is inside every single one of us. It's inside you. It's inside me. It's inside everybody listening right now. And that's not to shock or scare anybody. It's actually to empower you to realize your body is making cancer cells every day. Why? Many reasons. But the ones we know of for sure is anything that's causing DNA damage is likely leading to 
cancer cell creation in your body? What causes DNA damage? We know toxins cause DNA damage. The toxins that's in your food, that's in your makeup, your your deodorant, your lotion, right? These toxins, these known carcinogens, it's in the water, the air, it's in the VOCs coming off your carpets. If you like this podcast, please click the link in the description to subscribe and review us on iTunes. And your paint in your house, right? It's in the exhaust from the cars. These toxins are entering the body. They're causing DNA damage. And when that uh, the cells break down and they have to enter into a chronically fermentative state to basically survive, they tend to become cancerous if the body doesn't get rid of them fast enough. Now, here's the other side of that story. The other side of the story is we're all equipped with an immune system. And our immune system, one of the beautiful functions of our immune system is that it's designed to get the cancer cells out of your body. That's what it does. You have T cells and NK killer cells and you know all these great B cells and lymphocytes. And what they do is they look for abnormal cells, they look for damaged cells, they look for cancer cells, and they go and find them, they kill them, and they remove them primarily through your lymphatic system in your body. We're all designed with that. Oh, beautiful. We got this built-in system that gets rid of the cancer for us. That's great. Well, then why are so many, why are we almost at 50% of our population, nearly 50% of our population being diagnosed with cancer? 10 million people around the world dying every year from cancer and its treatments. Well, because we are not fully functioning our immune, we are not, our immune systems are not fully functioning because we are completely inhibiting our immune systems every single day by diet and lifestyle, mindset and environment, right? So Dr. Thomas Lodi says it in my documentary, he says it so beautifully and so famously. He says there is a cure for cancer. It's called your immune system. And when your immune system is fully functioning, you will not have a cancer diagnosis, period. I have stated that to Dozens of integrative medical doctors around the world, from Spain to Germany to the U.S. to Mexico, and every one of them, including scientific researchers that I've asked, I have asked this, including the data I have seen on it, all agree with this exact statement. So one of the core things we have to do is recognize if you have a fully functioning immune system, you don't have anything to worry about. Well, people go, well, I don't get sick very often. I think my immune system is working great. I think I'm fine. The reality is we can look at your diet and lifestyle and environment and your mindset. And I can just about guarantee you, you probably have some some areas to improve upon. As as I've discovered in myself, as I've been focused on for the last 15 years of my own life, you know, as I learn about these things, I test them, I experiment them, I try them on myself, right? And, uh, And I'm always about improving. And that's how I think all of us should be. So you look at what is it that actually improves your immune system, okay? It's not just buying a supplement in the store and going, it's called immunity, and hey, everything's good. I don't have to worry about anything else, right? Your immune system is this complex set of organs and all of their functions that are working together to eliminate, you know, these abnormal cells, to regulate uh, different functions in your body, to basically help your body heal and regenerate. And when your immune system's working, Let's say your immune system's upregulated and it's working properly. It's doing so many things that, you, you know, you could never imagine. And, and that's what you want. You don't want to have to worry about it. What you want to do is put it in the right environment so that it can thrive for you. You know, we know about 70% of the immune system is actually in your gut, you know, from uh, mostly in your intestines. You have all of these, you have this entire environment, this microflora, all these trillions of bacterial cells throughout your body that are all part of your immune system. You have this incredible ecological, if you will, uh, thriving community within you. And when that community is not healthy, when it is being damaged by toxins, by processed food, by genetically modified organisms and all of their toxic sprays like glyphosate and so forth and when you're living in stress and anxiety and fear, and when you're just breathing so many, breathing, eating, drinking, putting on your body so many chemicals every single day, it is damaging every aspect of your body that would contribute to your immune system function. So here's an example. You're eating 
processed food, right? Let's say it's made in a laboratory, in a factory, it's been dried, it's been cooked, it was grown with genetically modified uh, organisms as GMO corn, for example, and that was all sprayed with Roundup, all these chemicals, uh, toxicants we know that are endocrine disruptors and DNA damagers, right? You're eating this food every day and you feel fine. You know, you, you don't feel bad. Maybe after a few years, you start having a lack of energy. Maybe a few more years, you know, you got digestive issues, you, you're bloating all the time, your stomach hurts, you're you know, but you're still okay. You know, maybe a few more years, you're not sleeping as great. You got more brain fog. You know, you got worse digestive issues. Uh, maybe a few more years, you know, it's really starting to catch up. Now you're 10, 15, 20 years, and now you get a cancer diagnosis. Why is that? Because cancer takes years to actually form big enough in your body to be discoverable on something like a PET scan. The average is about seven years, depends on the type of cancer and the location, but the average is about seven years. Sometimes you can find it in two or three years. Sometimes it takes 10 or 20 years. So you've been living this lifestyle, right? And it's not just smoking cigarettes. There's so many other contributing factors. You're living this lifestyle, poor diet, lack of exercise, stress all the time. All these things are contributing to downregulating your immune system and creating a perfect environment for cancer to thrive. You know, it's creating leaky gut. And so now you've got an autoimmune disorder, right? Leaky gut is basically in the intestinal wall linings. You're, uh, you know, these proteins are basically breaking through this meshed area because the meshed area is becoming disformed, dis, uh, trans, it's, it's basically getting torn apart. And now these proteins from these foods can leak out. So it's called leaky gut into your bloodstream. And now your immune system, people think, oh, oh, autoimmune disease is your immune system attacking you. It's not. It's your immune system attacking these invaders that leaked out of your gut that never should have leaked out of your intestines into your bloodstream. It doesn't recognize it in your bloodstream. And it may uh, look like a, a molecule that's in your thalamus or it may look like a, a molecule that's in your kidneys or may look like a molecule that's somewhere else in your body and it starts attacking that. And so now your immune system is attacking your own body. Well, guess what? That's creating chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation is the number one thing we know that causes cancer. So now you have an autoimmune disorder that is, is from poor diet, poor lifestyle. It's creating chronic inflammation. Now your chances for a cancer diagnosis are exponentially increased, right? And all of this goes back to what you're putting in and on your body. I have this statement that I encourage everybody to write down. It's so simple, but it's so powerful to think about. What you put on and in your body becomes your body. What you put on your body and in your body becomes your body. Your skin, for example, is your largest organ in the body. And everything you put on your body goes straight into your bloodstream. So if you have lotions and you have toothpaste and you have uh, deodorant and shampoos and soaps, anything you are putting on your skin and anything you're putting in your mouth, in your body, literally becomes the cells of your body. That's what the cells of your body are trying to replicate themselves from. That's the fuel for your cells, right? And so if you're putting toxins and pollutants and chemicals and all these things in and on your body, guess what's happening to your cells? They're not getting the nutrients they need. They're not getting the amino acids, the vitamins and minerals, the phytonutrients they need. And they're getting too much of what they don't need, which is all these toxins that's creating DNA damage and causing your cells to ferment and become cancerous. So when you really look at it, we could go deep into all the science, but you don't really have to. You just start to look at the basic. It's common sense. The closer you are to nature, the less likely you're going to have a cancer diagnosis. The further we get from nature the more cancer, autoimmune disease, all kinds of chronic health conditions we are going to continue to see. And that's been so true. You can go back to 1905, where we had less than 1% of people being diagnosed with cancer. In 1950, that number went to 10%. And today here in the West, in most developed countries, it's 33% of women and 50% of men are being diagnosed with cancer. In just, you know, a couple of generations, right? Two or three, genera three generations, really. We've seen almost less than 1% to almost 50% of people. In America, that would be 150 million people when, you know, just over 100 years ago, it was, it was just a fraction of that. Why is that? Because everything we're doing today, from transhumanism to genetic modification to commercial agriculture to everything we're doing, 
is about profit over people. And when you have profit over people, it tends to cause corporations and people running these corporations to make decisions that is not for the health of the people. It's for the maximizing the profit of the corporation. And what that means is longer shelf life, longer stability, easy, way cheaper ways to grow and manufacture. So what does that lead to? It leads to chemicals that kills all the, the weeds and the bugs. But those chemicals, if they kill weeds and bugs, what do you think they're doing to you when you ingest them? Right? You think they're not killing you? I mean, come on, it's common sense. When we, it, common sense is not always so common though, right? It, it's basically we use some reasoning and some logic to learn to think for ourselves. The further we get away from nature, the more complex we become in our manufacturing and our processing and our chemical, you know, even, even, you know, yes, so many people are saying, yeah, plant based. We need plant based. We need vegan. We need more plants. And then they go, okay. So let's create, but people are like, but I love the taste of meat. They're like, well, let's create these, these uh, plant-based burgers that taste and look like meat. So we can do what? Maximize profit. If you look at the ingredients on those so-called burgers that now they sell, at, these plant-based burgers they sell at fast food restaurants, they're just as bad or worse than the, than the animal burgers because they are fake. They're made in laboratories, right? So it all comes back to we have to get back to nature. So have you developed specific protocols? Do you have a program that you run where you teach people on how to deal with cancer or get rid of it? So I, yeah, it's a great question. You know, I've had, I've, I've uh, had this question many times, right? Like I have cancer, what do I do? And uh, people email me that all the time. And I thought, okay, if I had cancer, my family member had cancer, what would I do? What would I guide them to? Well, I would do everything I'm already doing now, right? Which is more of a preventative as well as just a lifestyle optimization, health optimization. But uh, when you diagnose with cancer, you need to do more things. And so I put together a nine-module masterclass called Becoming Cancer Free. That that's exactly what I did. Is I, I did all the research, put together you know seven steps across nine modules with worksheets, and basically you know every module is about thirty minutes to sixty minutes. So in nine modules, you do one a day for nine days you would have an entire blueprint for what I call, you know, increasing your odds of becoming cancer free. And what's interesting is basically everything you do for helping your body to heal itself is the same things you would do for prevention. You might just do more of it when you have cancer. You might need more therapeutic doses of nutraceuticals or more therapeutic doses of, you know, Turmeric, for example, we know the studies on curcumin from turmeric uh, are incredible with so many anti-cancer properties, right? And so, for example, if I'm just wanting health to reduce inflammation and wanting to, you know, prevent cancer, well, then I just take, you know, a, a little bit of turmeric every day, right? But if you have cancer, the difference there is, well, you need to take therapeutic doses. You need to increase the amount of of turmeric that you're taking. Another example, onions, right? Onions, people think, oh yeah, I just cook with onions. They're great. You know, they're just part of my, well, they're part of a lot of people's, you know, uh, cooking plans, for example. But a lot of people don't realize onions have been shown to help lower the risk of stomach, colon, uh, breast cancer, among many other cancers. They're, they're high in health promoting antioxidants, including quercetin, right? Which can block carcinogens, slow cancer cell growth and kill abnormal cells. There was a study done with 543,000 people that discovered that the people who ate things like garlic and onions and leeks and shallots on a regular basis had a massively lower risk of cancer than those who ate them rarely, right? That's just one plant you can add to your diet, for example, onions, add some onions every single day to your diet, raw and cooked. I like to cook with them, but I also like to chop them up fine and add them to salads and things like that because you know, when you cook food, you start to kill the enzymes and you make it less nutritious than when you eat it raw. So, you know, if you're trying to prevent cancer, you want a higher raw diet. If you're trying to reverse cancer, well, you may need to do more raw. You need to do more nutrition, right? Uh, there's lots of good types of onions and garlic, but another great uh, nutritional food that we know has so many anti-cancer properties is mushrooms, right? Uh, there was a 2008 study where women who ate at least 10 grams, that's like maybe one mushroom a day, had a 64% lower risk of breast cancer. 
And just recently, this just came out. It was a massive meta analysis. And they looked at thousands of people from 1966 until 2020. And they found that people who ate 18 grams of mushrooms per day, and these are different forms of mushrooms, just stuff you can go buy at your grocery store, right? Uh, 18 grams per day is like two small mushrooms. Not a big deal, right? These people who ate two mushrooms a day had a 45% decrease in their risk of cancer. Just eating two mushrooms. All right, so now you got mushrooms that we know are, are preventing and, and helping heal from cancer. Then we got onions, right? So now you're eating onions and mushrooms each day, adding those in. There's lots of ways to make them taste delicious, right? And then you got berries. You know, there's so many good berries, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, uh, blackberries, all kinds of berries that have a ton of anti-cancer properties. Uh, there was a research done in Italy that uh, people who ate just a small 300 gram serving of blueberries, that's not very, that's not very much, uh, help protect their DNA from radical damage, uh, from free radical damage, and drastically minimize their chances of getting cancer because it's reducing DNA damage, right? So now you're adding some berries in every day. You have a cup or two of berries in the morning and the evening, right? And so there are a lot of, I mean, you could spend hours going into all the foods, but there are a ton of natural foods that you want to make sure they're organic so you're not getting the toxins from the pesticides and herbicides into your body. Grow some of these yourself. That's the best way to do it because then you know what's going in and use organic fertilizers, use organic soils. Don't put chemicals, don't spray Roundup, don't put you know chemicals in your food. Um, and you start adding more of these healing plants to your diet. You know, I'll give you a couple others that are, you know, pretty phenomenal is greens, for example. So uh, greens like cruciferous vegetables. When you add these cruciferous vegetables to your diet every day, uh, they contain something called glucosinolates, which is a really unique natural chemical that we know fights cancer in many ways. It helps deactivate carcinogens, reduce inflammation, neutralize oxidative stress, slow the growth of tumors, protect you from free radicals, and literally kill cancer cells, right? And these kinds of leafy green vegetables are things like broccoli and cabbage and spinach and uh, bok choy and Brussels sprouts, arugula, watercress. So now you just start adding in, you know, a salad every day. Not a big deal, right? And in your salad, now you got some some broccoli and some cauliflower and some cabbage, and then you add in some some blueberries and some blackberries, and you add in a little bit of onion and mushrooms, you know, great little dressing that we make often. It's just a little bit of organic olive oil, squeeze a lime in there, a little bit of salt, sea salt, and you're good to go, right? Or just get an organic, uh, low-fat, low-sugar. We know cancer thrives in a high sugar environment. So low sugar kind of dressing. And now you got your salad, right? So these are simple things for both prevention and helping your body heal. But to go into an entire seven step system, which includes everything that impacts your internal and external environment. That's why I created this masterclass because, you know, you, you need to spend the time, you know, nine modules. That's only five or six hours of content. But there's worksheets, there's there's go through every toxin in your home that you can easily reduce or remove that we know are contributing to cancer. Um, you go through your diet, your lifestyle, you know, medicinal movement, which is an exercise routine that's critical for helping your body heal. And then meditation, you know, your mindset, getting your beliefs on track with the fact believing that you can heal is critical. There was some really interesting case studies that I've come across over the years where I've heard it again and again, where people who were given a prognosis, you had six months left to live and they believed it and they worried about it and they thought about it every day and they talked to their spouse about it. Literally at the six month mark died. And sometimes they didn't die from the cancer or even the treatment. They died from something else at the exact six month mark. I mean, our beliefs are so powerful. Uh, if you want to look at all the science of this, I go into it in the Becoming Cancer Free Masterclass, as well as in the documentary, actually, Bruce Lipton, one of the fathers of epigenetics, uh, who wrote The Biology of Belief, has an entire segment on all the science of how our thoughts literally can create disease in the body or help our bodies heal from disease. Just by our thinking alone, and our science has proven this, uh, we have an entire segment in that in the documentary because it's so important. If you don't believe you can heal, you likely will never heal. 
So getting your mindset right, getting your thoughts right. And then, you know, in my masterclass, I also walk people through a powerful daily practice that helps shift your thinking and your beliefs to positive beliefs that are going to actually support your body and healing. And then we know the power of, you know, a daily meditation practice, uh, Elaine Gibson, two-time cancer survivor, for a uh, stage four cancer conqueror, now in her seventies, a grandmother, a dear friend of mine. Uh, she's in my class, master class. She's in my documentary. You know, she reversed cancer once, but then it came back with a vengeance because she wasn't doing everything she she really needed to do. When it came back as stage four, she told me she she went into training. She really went to town. And one of the biggest changes she made was she started meditating every morning and every night. All different kinds of meditations, guided meditations, music meditations, uh, you know, meditations from Joe Dispenza, you name it, Qigong meditations. But, you know, she got serious, did an hour every morning, an hour every night as part of her entire routine, her entire healing routine, uh, green, ju- green vegetable juice every day, primarily raw foods, uh, plant based diet, you know, exercise and and, uh, you know, other kind of integrative therapies, all these things added together. And she was able to completely reverse stage four cancer using a holistic and integrative approach. And she is one of thousands of people who have done that. So, you know, if you don't believe you can do it and you don't have the strategies to do it, then you'll never do it. But if you believe, if you don't believe you can do it and you have the strategies to do it, you might, you might not. But if you believe you can do it and you have the right strategies, your odds of being able to reverse cancer go up exponentially. Have you observed that uh, once someone has cancer that, I don't know, they have to go way above and beyond someone that's never had it in order to not only fix themselves, but keep themselves healthy? Yes and no. I mean, everybody's different, right? We all are different. That's why I can't give one single, like, if you do this thing, for sure, your cancer is going to go away. I've never promised that to anybody. Everybody's different. You know, their stages of cancer are different. Their beliefs are different. Lifestyles are different. We know principles. What I teach is principles and foundations based in evidence and reason and logic and intuition. And when you follow these, we know your odds can definitely go up. But, you know, there's no guarantees in life. There's no guarantee I'm going to live till tomorrow, right? There's no guarantees any of us are. So there's certainly an exception we have to come to, this exception of death, this exception of transition, of transforming into, you know, that next chapter of our lives. And living fully and vibrantly and happy and healthy every day we can until we do transition. Um, but I'll give you an example. Dr. Keisha Ewers, who uh, was living a very healthy lifestyle, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Well, I asked her, you know, because if you ask somebody who's pretty, has a lot of body awareness and intuition, is just pretty self-aware, they've been on a healthy path, you know, they tend to be much more in tune with their body and kind of what's going on. And so I asked her, and you can ask a lot of people this, and oftentimes they know, you know, why do you think you got cancer? She said, well, I, I had this situation in my life where my uh, child, you know, was molested and uh, I was able to forgive the, the molester, but I wasn't able to forgive myself. So she literally internalized her own guilt inwardly and just could, you know, punished herself. And within three months of that, within within a very short time of that experiencing happening and her internalizing all this guilt and holding on to it, then she, boom, she had this tumor appear right on her breast. And she knew it. She was so aware. She knew what it was from. It was from that guilt. And so she went into her own practices, uh, her forgiveness practices, her gratitude practices, mental emotional healing practices. And within three months, the cancer was gone. Boom, just like that. And I'm not saying everybody here just forgive someone, your cancer goes away. Though for some people, that might be true. I mean, it literally could be that simple and that powerful, or it could be much more complex. And in my experience, it's typically a a consortium of different causes. It's typically someone who is, you know, eating a lot of meat and processed foods. It's typically someone who is not exercising five or six days a week. It's typically someone who's living in stress, who is uh, constantly, you know, they may not think they're stressed out, but, you know, they wake up and watch the news every morning that instantly activates a sympathetic response and causes you to be in stress pretty much the rest of the day. Someone who doesn't meditate daily, 
someone whose home is, is filled with toxins that they're not even aware of. And it's all these things that add up over years and years and years. Some people think, oh, I eat healthy. And I say, well, tell me your diet, you know, because I think they eat healthy because they're not eating out fast food. They're eating at home. But then we go in and look at their diet and you see, wow, every sauce and dressing you have in here has 10, 12, 15, 20 grams of sugar, right? Which is insane per serving. Oh, plus you're eating, you know, all this processed meat, you're eating lunch meats and hot dogs. And plus you're eating, you know, all this uh, food that's not organic. It's filled with chemicals. Plus you're this, 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 you start breaking it down and you realize what someone thought they were eating healthy was really not eating healthy. And so the reality is once you change your diet and your lifestyle, if you change it for the right reasons, you will never go back because you never want to feel that way again. You never want to be sick again. You never want to feel bad again, right? And so if you're changing it and you feel better, which is, you know, there's a, there's a catch 22 when your body is toxic and you put in all this healthy food, your body starts going right for all the healthy, nutritious food and your cells start going for that and trying to purge all these toxins out. And people who switch to a really highly nutrient dense, plant based, you know, very diverse, healthy, organic diet, you'll actually have some healing crises, you know, often for the first few weeks. So you have to kind of do it through some guidance because now your body's purging all these toxins and people get rashes and skin things and digestive issues and stuff like that. But if it's done safely, you're totally fine because your body's getting rid of these toxins and it's starting to thrive on all this nutrition coming in. And once you live this way, you just have no desire to go back to anything else. Like I would never even consider eating a, a hamburger from a restaurant or a fast food restaurant ever again. And I haven't had one in, I don't know, I don't know, 12, 13, 14, 15 years why? Because I know what that does to the body. I know what it does to the mind. I know what it does to the digestive system. I just have no desire. So when you educate yourself, you have to keep learning this information and then you experiment and you get better and better. Then your, your, your body is, you know, heading towards that optimal place of health and healing and vitality. And that's why people in different parts of the world who live on very simple, clean diets, they move their bodies daily gardening and walking miles every day and spending time outside and they have low stress lives. That's why they can live 80, 90, 100 years old, pretty much with no disease. And they're vital. I mean, 85, 90 year old cowboys in, uh, in the peninsula of Costa Rica that have more energy and vitality than most, you know, 55, 60 year olds here in the West uh, or in the United States, I should say. Why? Because what are they doing? Eating simple, eating clean, eating from the earth, moving their bodies daily, having fulfillment and meaning in their lives, you know, very low stress. They're doing all of these things uh, on an ongoing basis. When it becomes your lifestyle, then at that point, you know you're on the right path. Until then, you have to keep Perfect. learning, keep growing, keep experimenting, keep getting better. Well, very good, Nathan. What's the best way for people to find out more about your work and to participate in the course you're running and to see your film sure you know i think the easiest people the place for people to um get connected is nathancrane.com because i've got a free ebook there that everyone can download absolutely free it's called the five natural pillars for helping prevent and reverse cancer it's in nathancrane.com um you can just download that for free it goes into more depth and gives people a little bit more of a framework and, and simple, you know, five pillars that people can start to wrap their minds around. Because I know we covered a lot of information today. Um, and then there you'll be on my newsletter. So, you know, we can e we'll email you about the film. But you can also just find the film anywhere online. You know, it's an Amazon number one bestseller. Uh, you, can, you can rent it. You can buy the DVD. You just search Cancer, the Integrative Perspective. Cancer, the Integrative Perspective. Or just go to theintegrativeperspective.com. Very good. Well, Nathan, thank you for coming on the podcast. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate being here. If you like this podcast, please click the link in the description to subscribe and review us on iTunes. You've been listening to the Finding Genius Podcast with Richard Jacobs. If you like what you hear, be sure to review and subscribe to the Finding Genius Podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. And want to be smarter than everybody else? Become a premium member 
at FindingGeniusPodcast.com. This podcast is for information only. No advice of any kind is being given. Any action you take or don't take as a result of listening is your sole responsibility. Consult professionals when advice is needed.